Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Alex Jones, your host. For the next two hours in studio, we have a real treat. Gary Haven, one of my favorite guests, uh, the, the producer of Amerigeddon, a billionaire, successful entrepreneur here in America, and one of the leading funders of the you know, anti-New World Order movement. And then, of course, we got Steve Quayle, who I've known for 21 years over the phone, in studio with us. Uh, and the world's so crazy right now that Steve Quayle normally, uh, you know, who stays out west, out in, you know, Montana and places, has actually been uh, flying around with Gary Haven at the controls of his jet, uh, flying himself around the country, speaking to capacity crowds and going on international television programs. And uh, you guys just met with a federal agent about some really uh, important stuff dealing with Stingray and phones. I personally have had multiple of my phones where people go in and start typing and take it over. I had to get rid of my old phone number before it and, and then start calling people and sending sending databases, and then now people I know it's happening. This just happened this weekend um, when someone I know was just sending someone a message, and then it was sending messages back from their phone saying, do you have this particular drug? And so they were sending it from their phone, and they could see the message had been sent, I guess, to have databases just to set everybody up, just like the DEA admittedly has uh, their parallel construction where they have total access to the NSA. I've had the former technical director of the NSA on, William Benning, just two weeks ago about this. And he said they have all of Hillary's emails. They have everything. And he said that it all goes through that database. They're saving it. And, and the DEA, the IRS, all have access to it. They go in. And then they basically make up a fake investigation and plant evidence when they want to bust you. So when I say the police aren't our enemy, I mean the local cop changing tires, writing tickets, going to you know, domestic disputes, it's a terrible job. They're great men and women on average. They're good people. Our local police departments are good on average. But the DEA, the CIA, uh, a lot of the FBI, it's globalist run now. So you want to get into this big subject, we'll do it the next hour. I'm not really teasing it. You just mentioned it. You guys were debating how far you could go with it uh, when we were talking. So let's talk about it during some of the breaks. Let's get into the people that said there's no threat of nuclear war. Uh, let's get into what's happening in the economy. Let's cover the waterfront with Gary Haven and Steve Quayle. Steve Quayle of stevequayle.com. Steve, it is amazing to have you here with us. Hey, Alex, this is just a delight. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, for me to come out of Montana, I think Alex put it very succinctly. And the timing of all the events taking place are becoming so problematic, so in our face that now everything, Alex, you and I used to talk about all the time, still talk about daily for you, daily or weekly when I'm on the radio with you or someone else but here's the thing it's in motion years ago we were telling you the day would come when this would be in effect this would be in effect and this would be in effect now it's all in effect and people can't deny it so the urgency and you rightly picked it up last week when you interviewed me i have never felt a more urgent time in my spirit and look i've been on talk radio 25 years 9,000 plus hours interview after interview after interview but by the by the time that we're talking about all these things alex we're talking about the headlines. You and I basically spoke into existence years ago, and if, I, I, I don't know of a better, and this is a, not flattery, it's just a true statement. I've made the statement, I think the InfoWars journalistic and investigative skills are second to none, and that, again, is what I am just proud to say. Well, I mean, not me. Uh, uh, You've got an amazing team. Merkel Phelan, uh, who, who was in Seattle and, and, and moved here a few years ago, does an amazing job, is in touch with all the white hat hackers, he broke with the secret documents that Stingray was listening to everybody, watching everybody, and finally proved it, and that they'd also set up private networks of these and were basically tracking everybody in real time and putting in their own communication system at Homeland Security so they could shut the web off but still be operating with their web. And, right. and, 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 and so the guy deserves a Pulitzer Prize for that. Absolutely. I and mean, that's the kind of journalist we have, and I will give ourselves the credit. When they know we'll break stuff like that, that is dangerous. But, but we're willing to do it. And by the grace of God... Like Jim Garrison said, we've stayed in the spotlight. I think that's why we've been protected. Well, absolutely we've been protected. And, and Gary has basically put his name, his reputation, his financial blessings on the line. And, and ladies and gentlemen, again, this is what causes people to come out who have a heart for other people. Alex, it's about people. It's about getting them to the point where they're not going to be cannon fodder. And what you brought up about Stingray, just a little bit of uh, information is years ago, people couldn't, uh, they wouldn't believe that there were assassination algorithms. They didn't believe that the red list, the blue list, and the green list exist. And that's now admitted. That's now admitted. They admit roundup teams. They admit a civilian inmate labor camps. They even call it re-education camps in the Army manual. Absolutely. 
And so now... Re-education camps, the Soviet term. But those are the people that get to live. What most people are losing track of that, quite candidly, Alex, with the very few mouths out there or mouthpieces and the broadcast that's out there, we have lost our country internally at any kind of level that I believe political outside of Donald Trump. And here's where, you know, thank you for all the times you've done. Please don't thank me. Just, just Yeah, no, no, no. Look, look I got, let, let me share this. The thank yous go out there simply because having these guys that are absolutely willing to risk their lives, you just mentioned the guy that deserved a Pulitzer Prize, having Donald Trump saying to the world the things that everyone thinks, but too, uh, they're too afraid to mention, that's the thing. Fear is the dominant theme, and I believe... And he's breaking through the fear. Yep, yep. And, and so the thing is, is that <clears throat> when you break the hold of fear, people can think. But the networks, obviously, are the greatest neuro-linguistic programming tool ever created. They're when you sit in front of the TV of mainstream media, that is a weapon system. You better be conscious. In fact, I'm going to skip this network break, last one today, because I want to give you guys more time, but I want to inject something here. We come from a perspective of stopping the globalists, being honest, shining a light on it like Paul Revere. Some people that are living in total fear think we're being negative or fear-mongering or fear porn because they think they're helpless and we're trying to demoralize them. No, no, no. We're, we don't think you're weak like the globalists do. We know the only chance we've got is for you to know, under a new world order with GMO and chemicals and chemtrailing, you're already being killed. The only chance you've got is to stand up and to say no. We want you to know about the re-education camps, the red list, the blue list, the green list, so that we can have a debate about it so they can't pull it off when they try to pull the switch, and now the military and the police are awake to a great extent, we won't be caught flat-footed. We're telling you how bad it is because we believe you'll then take action. Absolutely, and the greatest survival tool is your brain. The greatest uh, antidote for fear is knowledge that we document. Look, we spend so and action. much and action, and the action is where most people think that... And look at InfoWars, look at Gary, look at you. We are about action. Action. And, and, and we're in the studio today to basically say, this is a plea. This is a, a, a triune plea to basically get people to understand that you're out of time. Now, look, even like when your car runs out of uh, gasoline, the carburetor still has enough gas to continue on for a short spurt. And what we're trying to do today is give everybody not a short spurt, but we're trying to refill your tank so you can be active and not sit back. This is wait. the time for maximum effort. Absolutely. Gary? Gary? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm on fire, guys. Uh, you know, a, a few years ago, it might have been difficult to get up and stand beside us and what we're doing right now. But it is so obvious. It's so in your face. Open right world now. government. Yeah. You know, thanks to Snowden and WikiLeaks, we know they're listening to all of our phone calls. Uh, uh, you read the, the disclaimer in your television set not to say anything because it might be monitored. And yet we, we sit I here mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> and somebody can deny uh, that, that information is being gathered. It ain't going to be in our I remember interest. Quail 20 years ago saying your TV's watching and listening to you, and then engineers came and showed me the Scientific Atlantic boxes were doing it. Yeah, it, and the disclaimer is on, is on a box of a number of your television sets. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so, so and Trump has done a really great thing. You know, I don't agree with everything he says, but but this guy is has made it uh, uh, okay to talk about political correctness. He's made it okay to talk about globalism. And I think uh, today we should talk about that a little bit. Uh, it is no longer a, a conspiracy theory to use the word globalist. It is part of our common vernacular. You Americanism, know, not globalism, will be our credo. Yeah. Yep. It's a nationalist versus globalist world we're in right now, whether it's Brexit uh, and they chose wisely. Uh, or whether it's Marine Le Pen in France or Polemos in Spain or here in the United States, Trump is the nationalist. He's standing for American sovereignty, American freedom. And this is nationalism's last stand. Yep. Absolutely. Hillary claims she is a globalist. And and here's the problem with globalism. They're going to package it as if it's some solution to war, which, by the way, they're creating World War III so that they can solve the problem by having that's a right. global government. And guys, that's just the Hegelian dialectic. That's the strategy where you create a problem, uh, and then when you provide the solution, you acquire power. That is straight out of the book. In fact, all of the chaos going on right now, the open borders, the importing of unvetted Syrian refugees, who the FBI says up to 10% are radicalized. It's a classic destabilization program. Uh, the Southern Command has come out and warned of Sunni extremists crossing the southern border. That's in the news today on DrudgeReport.com.
Yeah, and, you know, ISIS has been coming across the border. FBI says they're now in all 50 states. You know, they want us to believe that they're incompetent, but they're not. This is a strategy. It's by design because, as Henry Kissinger said, the only way that you can have a, a, a one-world government is if you diminish the United States. Right. They are deliberately diminishing us. Everything from spending our money uh, to, to, to where it's never going to be recoverable, the debt's going to be so great, to opening the borders, to, to the lawlessness that the, that the, the Hillary just got away with uh, literally murder. Uh, and, 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 and Comey says, uh, hey, just because we let her off, don't think we're going to let you off. They blatantly put that in our faces. And you know what? I'm not a subject. I'm a citizen. And I'm an American, and I, I, I believe in freedom, but I also believe that uh, uh, that the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. That's right, and a historical we, moment is here. I'm, uh, I want to ask both of you this. Steve Quell, stevequell.com. I mean, folks, I've known this guy 21 years, never met him in person. It's amazing. Here he is. Uh, if, if you're a radio listener, you can go to infowars.com forward slash show. Some cable systems and TV stations are also picking up large portions of the broadcast now and the nightly news. Uh, but here's Steve Quell in the flesh. Uh, because we are at such a historic crossroads right now. Steve, going back 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when you were writing your books on geoengineering, genetic, Armageddon, you name it, now we're here. Now they admit chimeras, cross-species. They admit world government. It's basically exactly what the Patriots and the John Birch Society and others told us they were going to do. Because people see this paradox. They go, wait, the government's run by corrupt, evil people, but you're saying the government's one of our greatest hopes. It's people in the military and in some of these agencies that actually know we're telling the truth, that have leaked the info. How, how did the John Burr Society know this stuff in the 50s and 60s? They had a lot of patriots telling them. That's why it's dead on. And so that's why we can't just have a war with the government in general. We have to have a war with the ideas of the globalists and point out their occupiers in our government, or they will fool us into a civil war. Clearly, they're setting up civil war in Europe and here as you got into the destabilization program. How do we counter that? Well, we counter it, first of all, by saying, look at the 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 dialectic, which uh, Gary brought up. You know, H Hegel said, you create the problem. We uh, Everybody knows that. But what's tragic is most people don't understand that the war of the police against the people, the people against the police. Uh, Alex, I was told a decade ago that we're talking about simply assassins to provoke the war between the police. Look, at we talked about militarization of police, what, 15 years ago? Then they'll use the cops getting killed as the cover to wipe a bunch of other ones out. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, it's always control the narrative. Whenever the mass... Uh, and you talk about a list. We know the special list are on the police. Yes. And, and uh, for the record, police, uh, feedback to you, military guys, they've got their wives, uh, uh, where their wives go shopping. They know everything. They're trying to ultimately force the police to be the first line of attack or arrest. And then once they're done with those guys, the blue list is simply this, police and military that go along with the original roundup and assassination. Everybody focuses hey, on- Break this down. This has okay. been done in other communist countries under Nazi control. It's, it's an old totalitarian program. Explain how the police are like the garbage men that bring in the garbage. Uh, but once they've done that, they're then taken out. They're then taken out. It's, it's, a, it's just a fact. The war that's generated is being absolutely orchestrated, and the people that are behind the scenes, I would call a hidden hand, the globalists, the illuminists, the elitists, and truly, Alex, the Satanists, they are implementing all of their predetermined, and I say this, hellish plans. When you and I started on the radio, uh, we were trying to tell people about the events that were in the natural realm. Now, reading the front of, of Matt Drudge's page, it's like it's like a world of supernatural evil. I heard you use those words uh, the other day. And speaking of Drudge, he's linked to our story from Fox News. Top doctor concerns over Hillary's health, not a conspiracy theory. We have top university professors, the heads of whole departments saying clearly she's got neurological problems. And the New York Times says, you know what, just delist those articles. Don't let people see them. I mean, they're nakedly pushing censorship now. Yeah, they told Google to do that. What do you make of that? Well, it's just part of their exercise of control. And guys, we got to realize this. You do not have a free press in this country, with the exception of this Internet, which is another problem because the U.N. very likely going to take this thing over on October, October 1st. 1st. Yeah. So Notice we, it's all converging. Well, we have a limited time. And, man, I tell you what, if you can't wake up today with all the evidence in your face 
uh, uh, I, I don't know what's going to wake you up. Uh, but when they, and, and Stephen, I've been talking about this internet takeover. Are they just going to shut it down or, or, or are they going to slowly uh, diminish it? I think it's going to be slow, slow. And I agree with you on that. Uh, and, and how will it happen? Well, they're going to take something like uh, Islamophobism, okay? When, when I say something like, uh, you know, it probably not a good idea. Sharia law is not compatible in a free country. Yeah. Well, that makes me an Islamophobic. And by the way, the BBC now said that this weekend. Yep. They said shut down websites and arrest people exactly. that even. Exactly. And Germany's already doing it. Yep, exactly. Absolutely. You can see the beta test. <clears throat> yep. you can, and, and what I think this is critical identify, vilify, nullify, destroy. They're in the process. It's a formula I just started radio with. The identification, we're the bad guys. The vilification, we're the bad guys. We being the truth tellers. We being those that go out and say, wait, this is a an orchestrated uh, theater of the absurd. We're the conspiracy theorists because yes. we don't believe Hillary. By the way, and, and what's interesting is remember, those who initiate, this is just absolutely right out of Saul Alinsky on steroids. This is going by his book and who obviously Lucifer is his uh, direction. And That's guide. who he pledges to. Yep. to yep. Yep. And, and so, you remember, uh, uh, telling the, the truth in times of deceit is a revolutionary act. That's right. Yep. And how is it going for him, Steve Quayle, well, Gary I, Haven? In, 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 I'll turn it right over to Gary. In my opinion, it's succeeding at breakneck speed. I want to get to the, the major crux of the matter on, you mentioned France, you mentioned uh, Germany, obviously England. Alex, everybody's forgetting the first premise of the New World Order. Out with the old and in with the new. The Phoenix is their mascot. They must destroy their countries, their nationalism, their currencies, all their values. They've said they've, that. They've said that. So what you're seeing in the world, everyone, is you're seeing the actual implementation of the destruction of borders, language, culture, in order to introduce all of their designs and plans. And so we're saying we're holding back the dam to the best of our ability. But Alex... There's more leaks springing, and when this thing springs on the American citizens, you can watch everything that's going on in Venezuela to know what the future is. Let's talk about that, because people say, oh, Alex, don't fear monger. There's no depression. There are more than 30, 40 countries that are totally collapsed right now. It's unraveling all over the place, and we're just saying we need to fix this situation while the globalists are making it worse. We're going to come back and talk about all this and more with Steve Quell and Gary Haven. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. I talk a lot about this because... The lawsuit that happened a few years ago that got tens of thousands of pages from the Clinton uh, Foundation, not their international foundation, but the foundation based in Little Rock at their library, tells you how they operate. And they say, anybody that criticizes us, we call them conspiracy theories. We threaten the mainstream media to never listen to anybody, liberal or conservative, that has a view outside of what we're saying. And we've got to ridicule anybody that starts independent media that ever tries to sell any of their own products because we control them through the corporate sponsors. If anyone ever starts direct selling, which I figured out before I ever saw it in their memos, th that will free them. And then it will create a new independent media and bring back journalism. They use that term, bring back journalism. They knew they'd already killed it by the early 1990s. And so that's why it's symbiotic. We sell books, videos, preparedness items, water filtration systems, non-GMO seeds, at very competitive or sometimes the lowest prices, nutraceuticals. These are things that counter the globalist onslaught. I mean, the media has written big articles. Look, Jones says the government's putting stuff in your water and then sells you a filter to get it out. Absolutely, it's what I do in my house. <laughs> yes, exactly. We fund ourselves morally and, and, and are independent. Again, they act like it's dirty because we didn't get billions of dollars like NBC and MSNBC and stimulus money. Yes, we're evil. We don't audit you with the IRS and take your money and then use it against you. We just sell products. You can competitively, you know, go out and shop and decide to support this message that you see growing. And that's why I wanted to tell you, I finally had a chance to see the film last week. It is incredible. True Legends, the documentary film series, it's Discovery Channel and Beyond Quality. The Unholy Sea, the Vatican knows all the secrets. Look at how the Vatican is pushing all of this. We have this film now available at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, we also have Zeo Genetics. Uh, changing men into monsters and, and what the globalists are trying to do, this huge coffee table book by Steve Quayle. We have the Hillary for Prison shirts. And, of course, <laughs> we have the new $5 million budget fiction film that's a near-future dystopia uh, special uh, director's edition of, available here exclusively this week. Next week's going to be in stores nationwide. Uh, they've stolen uh, our country. It's time to take it back. Amerageddon. And this is the director's lengthy cut of the expanded one. 
not the one that you're going to be seeing when it's later on TV later this year. It's also still in some theaters around the United States. When you purchase it, it supports Gary Haven and what he did. It supports InfoWars and our entire operation as well. And then finally, one of the nutraceutical supplements that is about to sell out probably today, 20% off on the Parasite Cleanse, Living Defense at InfoWarsLife.com. And please get these films, show these to people in your area. This is how we're winning the information war. Will InfoWars by itself or Gary Haven making his film or Steve Quell by himself fix everything? No, but all of us together and more media outlets are impossible to shut down. And now globally, we see the anti-New World Order movement winning with the Brexit, having other big victories. We're gaining steam. The globalists are in trouble, but they're accelerating their plan to finish it up because they know their time is short to quote the Bible. So again, thank you for your prayers, your support. Don't thank us because you are the reason we've been able to do this. We're here carrying the ball. And quite frankly, we're all in now. Like Jim Garrison said, you know, they said, why are you still alive exposing the Kennedy assassination? They've killed over 300 people. And he said, because I'm the most vocal. I've already said everything. If they kill me, it highlights everything I've done. And I get that question. Why are you still alive, Steve Quill? Hey, man, I've been told that there, I'm the canary in the mine. You're the canary in the mine. And uh, why aren't you dead? Well, I have a real simple answer to that. Because it's not time and God's got people praying. You know, Alex, one of the joys of my life has been to see the supernatural hand of God protecting us. We'll never know until we get to heaven how many times God intervened in our lives. And by the way, I just came up with a new name for Armageddon. It's going to be called Haven's Headlines because <laughs> I asked Gary and, and really asked him to pray about it, to release it exclusively through Haven's Christ. Revelation? Yeah, or Haven's Headlines, okay? Because I, I said, Gary, you did. You, I don't know what you didn't cover, but the headlines of the day, all the U.N. stuff we've been warning about, all the U.N. Uh, images that have been seen across the land, across the Internet, we're now seeing, and, and that's why I love about the timeliness. This is not a natural thing. The, rela the releasing of Amerigeddon and the headlines of the day concerning the U.N., and we won't give it away, but the bottom line is it's the story plot. It's the theme. Of and I would just add... I mean, Gary invested $5 million in this, and I'm, and I'm probably guessing at this point haven't gotten it back, but you didn't do this to make money. It'd be okay if you did. You did it to warn people. You did it to put out good, you know, culture that isn't globalist garbage. You put it out as an antidote. You put yourself in the, the you know, in the arena. Yeah, you know, I didn't make a movie to make money. I made a movie to make a difference. And I think this movie has been fantastic. You know, it's fact-based. Huge success. Yep, yeah, we, we tried to include all the content that's in the news every day uh, that, that, that are being established against the people. By the way, Steve, if you're the canary in the coal mine, I must be the Gary in the coal mine. Oh. <laughs> okay, touche. <laughs> all right, there is so much to get into. Before the break, you guys were talking about a destabilization program. Clearly, I saw this a few years ago. It wasn't hard to see, but to actually see them do it is still crazy. Bring in 5 million Muslims, 80% military-age men, know that they were the Sunni invasion force into uh, Syria, advertise for them to come, have the founder of the EU take a demotion and be the head of the refugee program, flood them into the U.S. as well. Then they start attacking, they start killing. We're told we've got to give our speech up. We've got to take Muslim classes. This is now happening in Europe and the U.S. We've got to comply with them. We're bad. And then Europe starts collapsing. Then they reorganize it. They're now saying... We want to get rid of sports team names that are, you know, the Spanish or the French or the English because that makes all the immigrants upset. The American flag makes people upset. Don't wear it at school. We have to take our culture down for theirs, but that's just the cover for the globalism coming in. Now they're saying the European soccer teams are going to be uh, mythical names. They're not even going to be country names because that's bad. You can see how they're doing it. You know, they got rid of the Washington Redskins, or at least you're trying to, uh, what are they going to do with the Oregon State Lady Beavers team? <laughs> well, they're going to destroy all national borders, language, culture. They're going to destroy. I guess they can spin that as something bad. Yes. Okay. Yes. They're going to do everything they can, Alex, to absolutely destroy any integrity. Look, we knew when the President of the United States wouldn't even put his hand over his heart at the swearing in ceremony. We knew. When he was that was uh, a message. That was a message. When yeah. they put Mateen, the shooter's dad, yep. you know, behind Hillary, it's a message. It's a message. It was a three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar well-paid message, but nevertheless, it was totally psyops. And here's the thing that I want to get across to everyone: 
They have to understand that what we're doing right now is giving you the last breath of reality-based news. And I, I'm not so sure that it's all going to be based in the political realm. Or and that's what Drudge came here and said last year. He said next year's it. Yep, I agree with him. And that's why I think the timing of this, look, I don't know if I'll ever be with you again, but I thank God for this opportunity. You can't take anything. Well, it shows how late it is that you are here. Yeah, it shows how late it is. It, it's that demanding and it's not drudge hadn't done an interview in years he popped up here to warn right and people better understand that's how serious this is and i hope we make it something huge doesn't happen and i hope we're still here next year i'm just saying i'm really concerned i'd say 50 50 right now and i'm i'm a little bit more than that i'm saying 70 30 against uh, us because here's the thing all of the news that's out there remember the number one goal of the global elitists the satanists the luciferians is to overwhelm us with data overwhelm us with problems, terrorize us. But you know what? The, the, there's a great uh, a scriptural reference. The righteous are as bold as lions. And so the thing is, is we don't have to sit and cower in fear. And that's what they're counting on, Alex. They're counting on people just fearing and caving in. Let's, well, well, listen, let's, let's talk about real fear. If the globalists ever get their agenda, again, people think that I'm fear-mongering, bringing up real crises, I'm bringing it up to stop it. If I call my neighbor, hey, your house is on fire, it's not the fear monger. It's so we can get the fire department out there and I'm telling them, okay, that's taking action. Uh, if I say, hey, your wife's choking, I'm going to do the Hamlet maneuver, it's not fear mongering, I'm going to save her. I've actually seen people try to stop me saving a woman. That's how Nan they, they, they were saying 911, 911. So we're sitting here seeing this unfold. So let's actually tell people what is the New World Order's real goal? If they win, that's what people should be worried about. Well, look at every place you go, your own family, nine out of 10 people are to be destroyed. And that's, that's you've quoted, we can quote ad nauseum, everybody who said it from Jacques Cousteau to Prince Philip, it doesn't matter who you quote. Ted Turner. Ted Turner. And, and by the way, Ted Turner said, uh, when if there is a heaven, and uh, I'm going to assure him there is, that he's going to go up to God and punch him in the nose. And I told Gary Haven, I'm looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that when God says, take your best shot, Ted, you know? I mean, that is the epitome of vanity. But here's the thing. Where you're coming to, where I'm coming to, where Gary's come to, is the fact that this is a supernatural evil. And again, Matt Drudge is to be commended because he's telling people, look, we never have to deal when we started. We never had to deal when we started on broadcast radio with people eating people's faces off or people chopping up human beings or Christians absolutely being slaughtered worldwide and, and, and the Muslims in charge don't ever want to talk about that. You see, because that's where the disconnect is. The disconnect is simply that... And mental illness is exploding. Mental illness. Craziness, you see it everywhere. Demon possession. Demon possession, Jesus cast out demons. You know what happens in the United States nowadays? They welcome them, they give them a political uh, title, and they say... Go destroy the country. And that's, or, they, or they build statues to them in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, amen. Or that's New it. York City, which almost happened. Yep. So we, we're, dealing with, we're dealing with the basis of all this. Hillary Clinton, Saul Alinsky, Obama, Saul Alinsky. And he dedicates his book to Lucifer, okay? And we talk about Luciferians. You were, you were the guy that went out to the Bohemian Grove, made your videos on it, and people still didn't believe it. Now you've got everybody putting their hand over their eye. I'm saying it to describe it. You've got oh, that. no, they'll say I'm doing it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, you can look at, I don't have, uh, you know, slits in my uh, pupils. You know, it's, it's the the idea is simply this. Donald Trump, in I, my opinion, is God's prosecuting attorney. He's laying out the evidence. And it's like everything evil is swarming upon him. I think that the, the fascinating thing about this is that, you know, I you probably heard this, but I gave a word that I really felt was an answer to prayer. And God said, before I allow America to be destroyed by the Russians and Chinese, okay, now this is hard to take, I'm going to reveal the sins of America's leaders to the people and the people's sins before a holy God. Doesn't that biblically always happen? Before a country goes under judgment, they get warning after warning, and then one really big warning. I believe yep. the big warning's coming. I believe the ultimate warning is coming. I don't know if it's going to be geophysical. You know, for instance, Tambora, a, a volcano. People, you know, people say, what a hypocrite. You live in Montana. You ride on the Yellowstone supervolcano. I can tell everybody this. I told the BBC, get down to the South Pacific before uh, the band of... Well, I was about to say, you were the guy saying 20 years ago, get ready for the Ring of Fire to wake up. It has the most action ever recorded in modern history. More, and, and we're seeing now climate change. And let me tell you where climate change comes from. In the book Xenogenesis, I have an interview. This is the most critical thing. I told uh, this on Jim Baker's show. By the way, we asked everybody to raise their hand, or those who listen to InfoWars to raise their hand. 
99% in the audience at Jim Baker's show raised their hand. Wow, that's a big show. That's a big show. So the thing is, is that in Xenogenesis, I, I, I made the statement, I'll make the statement for your audience, the most important information I've ever gotten in 10 years is contained in the book Under the Rainbow. Basically, a dying CIA high-ranking official talked about the chemtrail. And as you know, I broke that story 20-some years ago. But it's more than what people think. It's not just to destroy the food, destroy the atmosphere, destroy us. It's to destroy the, the balance that God created. The rainbow was God's covenant with man that he wouldn't destroy the earth by a flood again. So in xenogenesis, xenogenesis means that the, an addition of the third strand of DNA, which is either alien, fallen angel. When I say alien, I'm talking about genetically altered DNA put into the human genome to do away with... I was about to say, even if people... Could... I never get into space aliens and things because you can't put it one way or the other. What I get into is they're creating new species and new DNA and artificial DNA that is alien, not of this world. That's what I'm and saying. And now they're mixing it with, with, with nanotech, so they're now making it silicon-based. And when you get silicon-based life forms versus, you know, carboniferous life forms. That's what you've got on the cover of the book. Yep. And can I hold this up? Sure. Yeah. It's really important. It's got three elements in the cover of Xenogenesis. This is done by Duncan Long. And that's available now at Infowarsstore.com. Infowars.com. But you've got the flying saucer, you've got the baby, and you've got the robotic. We're dealing with transhumanism. We're dealing with stuff that's out of, uh, literally out of mis- And mis in their own words at Bohemian Grove and Skull and Bones, they believe they're channeling from creatures in another dimension, building things that they've been given divine guidance to do. So whether you're a Christian or Satanist, whatever, the atheists are way behind because the elite, like Darwin, channeled this whole vision of DNA and world government and gave it to Galton, who created the eugenics movement, all off of hallucinations that Charles Darwin says he got from entities. Right. And, and by the way, that's not in the origin of species, but he wrote letters that are public saying this. This is a fact. Oh, absolutely. And, and the transhumanism, you know, George Orwell, they who control the past determine the future. And my statement to just be up, one up on Orwell, they who control the past control the future. So the, the entire uh, exchange, the language of the day is this, God's creation is not good enough. We're going to create an Ubermensch, a Superman, okay? The book that I wrote, which will be available on Infowars.com, Empire Beneath the Ice. Do you know that even when Dr. Werner von Braun was interviewed and, an, and another very famous uh, German scientist, they basically said, it's not that we Germans were smarter than everybody else, but all the information came to us from spiritual sources. In the book, I actually... And by the way, I'm an expert. I've read hundreds of books on the Nazis. I, I really researched that when I was in high school and college. And then that's in the uh, that's in the Nuremberg trials. Absolutely. I mean, they were chopping Germans' heads off and then trying to, like, seance info from them. And we're getting all, all, all this technology. Well, they had technological demons and that they literally... And, and by the way, this is all provable. But again, even if people don't believe this, look at Ray Kurzweil. He says, I don't believe in God. I'm going to build one. Yes. But we've all got to die first. Yep. I mean, it's all directly out of the Bible. They get to live forever, but we all got to die first. There's something wrong with yeah, that. We're going to kill everybody, but then I'm going to let you live forever. But kill them first, then I'll give you the power. Right. And so so what are we seeing? We're seeing... You're going to be a god. That's that's yeah. Genesis. That's That is the book of Genesis. Well, in fact, it's the original lie. You yep. Know, Satan went to Eve and said, you can be like God. And by the way, you will not die. And and if you think about that, in this current... And that's the headlines. Why are all the billionaires obsessed with living forever? That's the headline of the Associated Press, because they're, they, they, they're into this. Yeah. And men... They're some ugly dudes. Have you seen a picture of Rockefeller lately or, oh, yeah. or yeah, Kissinger? People ask why they can still be alive because basically they are blood, human blood sucking parasites, okay? The, the Rockefeller Foundation and other foundations have, they've exploited, if you will, trying to enhance the human genome. But the missing element in this, and this is why, you know, people... So they founded Cold Springs Harbor, the Rockefellers, hey, and the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, right. and they're over most of the blood products in the U.S. Peter Thiel's come out yep. and says he wants the young and the blood to live forever. I'm not saying he might even be a bad guy, but he's, like, kind of saying what they're saying in public. Right, and here's the thing. I, I talked to a pilot, you'll appreciate this, Gary, that flew into one of the secret laboratories in Virginia someplace, and he said this, as far as you could see, like a football field inside, underground, our laboratories, the number one obsession was enhancing humans, okay? Enhancing what were humans, that's what he said. And the chimeras, the production. Look, Listen, they tried to hire my dad in the mid-80s, $500,000 a year because he was teaching dental implants at, at Baylor Medical School. Wow. And, and he was already doing work on, like, high-level CI people and stuff, you know, just, just their teeth because, you, know, you know, he had a clearance or whatever working at Baylor. And 
they and, I'm, and my mom wanted to know. He said, well, it's classified. I can't tell you. This is at the dinner table when I'm like nine years old. And he goes, it's cyborgs. That, that's all they're going to tell me. But And then my mom said, well, David, is this? He goes, no, oh, they're hiring a bunch of the top oral surgeons. It was a huge industrial program. It wasn't just him. They hired some of his colleagues. <laughs> Stay there. All right, Steve Quayle is uh, coming back in the studio here in just a moment. I'm here with Gary Haven, maker of the film America. Now, my dad didn't take the job in Maryland, but he did get an offer to work in a secret physical underground laboratory facility. Was I remember my mom asking about it. He's like, no, it's it's underground. Um, and he, he he never actually went up there and got the full tour and whatever the secret stuff was, just because he told me everything he knew about it. But it was just basically imagine with spies. Mm -hmm. Being able to graft things into bone, hide things, do things with teeth, basic stuff like that. But here's the bottom line. There is a giant Manhattan Project program, much bigger than the Manhattan Project, to extend life for the elite and to not give the general public that, but to also test things on us and to dumb us down. And the elite basically admit they're doing this. Uh, and Bill and Melinda Gates lead that project. What can you say uh, about them, Steve Quayle? Well, uh, here's the thing. Vaccination is the ultimate weapon of destruction. And all those involved, especially Big Pharma and others, ha has everybody noticed, Alex, everything that comes out that's a new threat biologically is automatically always met with a vaccine that they just happen to have on the back burner. The, the idea is this. I, I made this statement. It was on your show. Shot in the arm, shot in the head. Either way, you end up dead. And so it, the ultimate it, soft kill weapon that kills you 10 years later. Absolutely. And I apologize for this earbud. Oh, we're going to move it over. I think it's too okay, tight. Okay. Uh, but but this they've been caught adding things to vaccine, the U.N. and others. Yeah. We know the vaccines don't protect people. And they're trying to set the precedent. Governments that have been caught thousands of times in lethal secret tests from Tuskegee to you name it, radiating little kids, giving people syphilis, that they want to put something in us because they love us. Well, and, and the point is, is that everything they can do to destroy every barrier, God made us wonderful. He made the human body with such an amazing immune system. A lot of the products that you sell are designed to base the immune system, to build it up. But everything's coming against us. See, here's the bottom line, everyone. They hate human beings. And it's because I don't believe that at a certain point, a lot of these guys have given themselves over, that they become totally possessed. And now what we're seeing is a true outpicturing. We're seeing the true price that these Illuminists pay, even with their health. So basically, if we look at this from a cosmology, this is what Christians already believe, but from a science fiction cosmology, it's an interdimensional invasion into people, and then they're building the planet they want, the atmosphere they want, the system they want, and getting us ready to be phased out in their final colonization when these demons merge with silicon that supposedly lives forever. Absolutely. And, you know, when you've got on the front of, uh, again, major news sources, robot babies being born from robots. But here's the thing. You're talking about demon-possessed. A demon, let me just make it real quick, is a disembodied spirit of a former living entity that was alive. I'm sorry, I'm trying to look at green or There's red. so many cameras. Go ahead. Yeah. You're doing a great job, Steve. Okay. And the, the idea is this. A disembodied spirit wants to be embodied. Imagine this, Alex. Imagine such sinister, evil people that they've collected the DNA of everything from Genghis Khan, Kublai Khan, Hitler, Stalin. You name a bad guy in history. They want to match up with DNA that matches them. Yep. And also, they It's just want like uh, the movie uh, Avatar. Absolutely. But even one step beyond that, you know, when the... And, and again, this is why, excuse me, I fall... I'm, I'm going 300 miles an hour. When we're dealing with the fallen angels, the whole thing about that. Now, that's biblical, okay? But now you're getting people coming out and saying that they take orders from a fallen angel. In our, This is amazing. In True Legends, we've got an interview with a very, well, I don't know which way to, there we go. It's okay. Okay, True Legends. The deal is, is, is Tim Alberino in, in Italy meets with a very wealthy, wealthy gentleman who basically said that Zachariah Sitchin was, was being instructed, okay, by an Anunnaki. An Anunnaki is another name for fallen angel. It's just in the battle. And let's be clear, whether you believe in this or not, we're just here looking at this as, I guess, anthropologists or sociologists, the elite folks, I don't know any of them that are really atheists, they all believe they are getting instructions from, quote, angels. They admit that's what Skull and Bones does. They worship angels while they sit in big pools of feces. Okay, I, I mean, you cannot make this up. That's mainstream news. We'll be right back. What type of angel wants you to sit in feces? Billionaire entrepreneur, filmmaker, patriots here. And, of course, we've got 
one of the original survivalists, one of the original people of the modern wave of exposing the New World Order. That, of course, is Steve Quell of stevequell.com. We're carrying his true legends, the unholy sea, at infowarsstore.com. We're carrying uh, America Geddon uh, exclusively right now. It's going to be in stores around the country next week. Uh, was delayed, so I'm glad we have an extra week to be the exclusive uh, purveyor of it. And you can also get a free bottle of colloidal silver uh, when you get a second DVD of America Geddon. Uh, Xenogenesis, the book, is also available at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, a long segment's coming up. You said you want to get into the threat of World War III, but I want to get back into the basic cosmology of the globalist. I've been on air 21 years. You've been on air 25 years. I never touch UFOs and stuff because, quite frankly, I can't prove it one way or the other. I, Congress admits FEMA camps. People won't even admit that's real. They won't even admit Hillary's got a health problem, so I don't go there. But I can really say, as a deep researcher of history and the globalists, when you mentioned the Nazis being into the occult, saying we're getting this information from spirits, skull and bones, all of this, Ted Turner, who wants to go punch God in the nose, you'll hear they're atheists on the news, and then you actually go read their real writings and statements. They believe they're getting knowledge from these good spirit guides of these angels. Well, the Bible says all of this and warns people, and now what the Bible said is happening. But the main churches just say, oh, rejoice, God's about to come back. Well, I, I thought we we're supposed to oppose this evil. What do you say about that, uh, Gary? Let, let me, let me uh, uh, Steve's taught me a lot about this. Uh, uh, you know, there's no aliens, there's demons. And, and Steve has a great explanation. He's taught me about this, you know, the, where, where these demons come from. Uh, uh, and we know that fallen angels rebelled against God, came to this earth, and uh, we know that they had sex with human women. And we know that the offspring uh, uh, were, were the, the, these entities that Steve will talk that's about. That's in the Bible. Yeah, it's all biblical. And that's why the elites try to intermarry is to keep that bloodline, right? Well, Absolutely. The, 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 you know, the idea is Satan knew that he, if he could contaminate the human DNA, he could prevent the coming of Jesus because Jesus had to be of pure DNA. And a lot of the Bible, a lot of the really awful things that happened, the entire cities is wiping, wiped out, wiping out the bad guys. Was was to cleanse the DNA so that that uh, Jesus, Satan, could not pre prevent Jesus from coming. And I see what's interesting about this conversation right now is is my goal, and I think uh, uh, Alex, you've joined uh, us in this, and, and Steve's been kind of doing both of this for a long time, is to wake up the evangelical community, the very community. So we just hit on it. That, that's what will power us. Yeah. They're, they're, they have a, a passion, a commitment for truth, and it's interesting. The evangelicals have been behind the eight ball on this thing. So what, what I was about speaking? to say, even though they've not been really criticizing the globalists as of yet, they're starting to. There's pre-demonization of them in all these government manuals. They better just start exposing it now because they're already the target. Absolutely, and you brought out, again, you brought out the story on the clergy response teams, okay? I call those guys that, well, a, a, a pastor that has joined that, I call them the Pied Pipers to Perdition, okay? They're going to lead their flocks, literally, being told what they're, that, that it's basically on a, an, on a misunderstanding of Romans into the FEMA camps. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a, the most perilous time in history, and it's got to just slap everybody in the face that now the headlines on Matt Drudge are ex exclusively dealing, it's getting more and more weird, Alex, so what Gary was talking about, the fallen angels, these entities, and I said Zachariah Sitchin, we... Nothing makes sense until you realize the elite are into this. Whether it's real or not, they are manifesting it because humans are able to build whatever we envision, and the elite believe they're getting off-world technology and building it. Well, they and you can look around and see what they're building, a high-tech something. And they're all getting ready to go underground because, you know, the, the word zombie, and it applies to this, a zombie is something that's, that appears to have life but it's dead. It has a life force beyond the normal life force. It, it's why it's why Hollywood pushed so many demons. Stay there. I want to ask you, because I, I mentioned this in the News Rights article saying I'm a liar. It's been in the Associated Press, you name it, that for the last five years they're training the Marines and Army to, quote, take out mass zombie attacks, which is a archetype of just humans in a mob mentality act like zombies. So instead of saying, oh, we're training to mow down Americans, we train to fight zombies that don't exist. But then they do exist because, again, it's it's all basically a double meaning. Let's talk about that with Steve Quayle, Gary Haven, and the threat of World War III straight ahead. All right, we're going to talk about the the Methuselah gene. We're going to talk about a lot of really heavy things here. And, and, and here's my point. Whether you believe in this, whether I believe in this, the elites believe in it, and they have discovered cancerous cells that never die. They're called immortal cell lines. Uh, the first one was found here in the United States back in the 40s, and the cells are still alive today. And the military is training to, quote, 
take out mass zombie attacks. I'm talking Associated Press. I'm talking Business Insider. This news is four or five years old. Pentagon document lays out battle plan against zombies, 2014. Now, I was talking about it two years before it was even in the news because that's, again, how they say we're not practicing to mow down citizens. It's just zombies for fun. But what they mean is masses of citizens during uh, collapse of society, people act like zombies. But you take it even further than that, Steve Quayle, and then Gary Haven. Well, zombies has a, uh, has a twofold meaning. The zombies are those who are left on the surface of the earth after all these calamities happen. And th that's the, kind of the coverall theme for anybody that's not one of the elite. But on, that's on the left hand. On the right hand are the zombie viruses. And Alex, I've literally interviewed a military, high-ranking military guy that went into great detail about the test zone in Iraq for the actual release of some form of a zombie virus and talked about a guy walking, multiple witnesses, with half his head gone, a hole in his chest, dragging his arm backwards and breathing out of lungs that are gross. Now, I'm sorry to be gross, but that's exactly what he Viruses said. that turn off the normal semaxes of the body and let it go even further. Right. And, and isn't that associated with rabies viruses? Right. It, and, and remember, we're in the age of rabies viruses, but we're in the age of the most... It, it, it's, it's a cornucopia of evil brewing in a... And they're just testing thing. everything. And everything. And by the way, the Human Genome Project was specifically designed and funded to find, the, if you will, the demon blood strains of... I was about to say, and in the new Superman movie, again, they admit, the, 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 all these big famous comic book writers, that it's propaganda placement or predictive programming to get people ready for things. You've got the doomsday character that cannot be killed. Right. Because he's this uh, mutagenic abomination. Mutagenic abomination. There used to be a time... When comic book carriers were, or uh, I'm sorry, comic book characters were the good guys, Superman, Truth, what, Justice, and the American Way, and the, and the American Way. Now you got Superman fighting Batman, and I, I, so many superheroes. But what are they saying? The future belongs to genetically altered people or entities or robots versus to us. And and that's and now they're saying robots are going to have rights. You aren't. They're totally, yes. admittedly preparing us. Gary Haven. Yeah, you know they call this predictive programming. You know all the kids now are worshiping these uh, 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 comic heroes that have had genetic uh, alterations. And, and and of course Steve writes about that. Uh, you know I want to mention something about virus. When when uh, millions of us received the polio virus as children, uh, we were contaminated with cancer cells. It's admitted. Yeah, yep. and, and that is a fact that's SB easy 40. to find. And, and so trusting the medical community to care about you without questioning them. Uh, uh, believe me, they have not proven their trustworthiness to me. And Gary, keep going. I just want to add, it's in the mainstream news today. Kids in the West and young people are the most depressed they've ever been. Women are the most depressed. But they say, I don't care. I want my video games. I want my iPhone. I want my TV. And, and they actually get defensive if you warn them that they've been programmed by it. Because to them, it's the real world. Actually, that's so true. Alex, all the video games, all of virtual reality was designed to take thinking out of the realm of the next generation or the next two generations because that's their world. They don't understand history. You've done the man. It's a proto-matrix. It is. it is, And it, what it gets, it gets worse than that because they're divorcing them. And they will then believe a superhero coming on their iPhone or on their iPad or whatever going, Hi, I'm superhero. That's their new friend that they... Yes. It, real people won't be influencing them. It'll be there. Well, they admit dating sites, most of it's a fake bot. Right, and it'll be it'll be basically a, a, a sympathetic demon saying, oh, I understand your problems. You they know? admit it's going to be an AI conscious algorithm that's a real thing, and then you bring into your house the, the, the little Amazon computer that you talk to that runs everything. Absolutely, and, and remember this. Any computer that runs anything is watching everything you're running, doing, thinking, feeling. And why is it the Defense Department was so concerned with all of their neural, their brain enhancement, their brain reading, the whole, the whole, if you will, uh, interface. Uh, yeah, the interface. Thank the you. The brain has no firewall. Right. And the idea is this: is that to control everything that their soldiers think. Look, they they are doing away with veterans for one reason primarily, and that is because those men and women would give their life because they love this country. They're not perfect, but they're the last free independent warriors. Absolutely. They're the final phase out of humanity. They're phasing out families, women, men, everything. Plants won't produce seeds that produce seeds anymore. It, it's the death of this planet's 
uh, system that God created. Yeah, we are I, seeing the extermination, the execution of the planet by the very people that claim they're the guardians. Gary Haven. Yeah, you know, we got to realize uh, scripturally, Satan uh, hates people because we are made in, in his image. And it's all about destruction. He wants to destroy everything. And these global And even if Satan didn't exist, which we know he does, this is Satan. This is what the Bible said. This yep. is it. Yep. And joining uh, the spiritual realm uh, to the liberty movement is critical right now. And I'm so glad. Let's we're talk doing about that. that. Let's talk about fighting back. That, you know, uh, that's what you're doing. You're taking this message directly to the. Yeah, you know, I could be on a desert island somewhere enjoying myself. I made all the money I need. So why am I bothering with this? Well, I'm bothering with it as if my life depended on it. My grandchildren, uh, your family's lives depend on it. We have an enemy. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the line out of the movie uh, 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 that H.L.L. Uh, 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 Elkin, uh, always have trouble with that movie. You'll, you'll recognize it. The, the, the hero, hero tells the king, uh, uh, the enemy is upon us. And the king says, uh, uh, I'm not uh, uh, prepared for open warfare. And he says, well, pr be prepared or not, the enemy's here. That's and, right. And, uh, you know, so we have to realize, I don't care how afraid you are, That's how it. busy People you are. People think if they just deny this, yep. then it goes away. No, the only way to be safe is to fight it. You know, Absolutely. Churchill said, I love what Churchill said. He says, uh, an appeaser is someone who feeds the alligator hoping he's not going to eat him. And, uh, and that's the world we live in right now. Guys, the alligator's coming for you. Well, hoping the alligator eats you last. Yeah. <laughs> You're just stalling. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Well, we've been thrown to the alligators. We're thrown on, uh, their goal is to throw us on the trash heap of history. Here's the thing, everyone. Throw out the word conspiracy. You can watch it in real time on network news. Everybody has teamed up against They're God. unified. They're, They're lying. They've got fake polls. They're delisting him on Google. They're lying about us. They're saying, shut down Breitbart. Shut down Drudge. Shut down Jones. They're openly saying, shut us up. They've said on MSNBC and Salon, I should be arrested. Well, look, here's the deal. In, in a kingdom of liars, telling the truth is the ultimate enemy. And what people have got to, uh, here's what, they don't even have to wrap their heads around it now. They can see, I don't need to tell somebody who used to be middle class and now they can't even feed their families that the country's changed. Liars, liars, liars. And, and there's a wonderful passage in the New Testament that men will give heed to seducing spirits. They will give heed. That means they will be taken in by lying, lying demons. And, and then they believe the con more than reality. Yeah, and by the way, lawlessness, that's called the mystery of iniquity in the New Testament. We are a lawless society. When the director of the FBI absolutely goes into a great, basically, soliloquy on, yes, she's guilty, but basically, I can't do anything about it. That's the, the bottom That's a declaration that, that evil has taken over. That's ev evil reigns. Evil reigns. And the only thing to hold back evil, obviously, is when uh, you know, good men do nothing. But more than that, the, the definition of conspiracy, Alex, no one can accuse anybody of that word because they'd have to admit that those who they listen to, mainstream news, that those that those people are doing is this. They're vilifying to destroy. And that's what's at stake. I was about to say, and, and, and Gary and Steve, Gary Haven, speak to this, though, because you started getting into it earlier. You're going out, reaching out to evangelicals. You're going out, getting all these programs that reach hundreds of millions of you know people, potentially. And that's great, because that's an audience that has been you know absolutely on target with so many issues, but also in the dark about the fact that it's actually happening right now. Yeah, Steve and I were on the uh, Jim Baker program this last week. He's got a huge audience, and what a great opportunity uh, to, to really speak truth to people. You know, the, the evangelical community is a natural community to turn this country around. You know, we're committed to truth. We're, we serve the author of truth, Jesus Christ. And yet, the evangelicals have been held back and, and I hate to say it, but it's a lot of these n nonsense going on there into their churches. You know, they hear about name and claim it and, uh, and, and the myth about the pre-trib rapture that you, we're all going to check out of here before this happens. Guys, you need to get in your Bible and learn the truth. But I've been given the privilege to speak to that audience because I'm one of them. I'm a Christian, and I, and I, and I understand the truth. And, and I'm also part of the liberty movement, and I'm part of the truth movement. And, and to join these two together, we can take our country back. Now, there's going to be a battle, and there is going to be a new world order. The question is, will we be a remnant 
that escapes from the from the real destruction. And by the way, this is the most dangerous thing you've ever done. You know, Chuck Norris said, you know, to you and his son about the film, we'll get ready for him to come after you, putting this film out, trying to go in and get the Christian churches moving in the right direction, like the Black Brigades of 1776 is is the key to this. Yeah. And, you know, that's you can tell why they went after Baker and attacked him because he's the type of guy that actually will talk about this now. Uh, and despite them trying to destroy him, you know, he's, he's back on his feet again and reaching tens of millions. It's a testimony of how they demonize, how they lie, and what they do. Um, but the good news is... It's got to really worry the globalists. I go back to this. The military is so awake. The police are so awake. Um, this is going to be spectacular. I mean, I mean, th this collision of forces is going to be amazing. Well, it's going to be, Jesus said it like this. There's never been a time in history like it, nor would be again. And except the days were shortened for the elect's sake, there'd be no flesh left alive. Well, Alex, when we're talking about zombies, we're talking about transhumanism. We're talking about the destruction of 90%. You and I broke the story on Deagle. And the Deagle, remember the survey? We did that on your show. And they even, Deagle put up, look, we're not a conspiracy. We're not some kind of satanic cult. We're just telling the information that we have available based on the death of the middle class, how few of Americans are going to be. And you remember what the, the percentage was? It was really low. In other words, we went from 330 million people, Gary. To 60 million. And to by the way, they just released some new numbers. And they well, let's talk about these studies they've done. Uh, yep. Let me come back. Uh, Wow, Gary Haben and, of course, Steve Queller, our guest. Uh, both of their new films are available at InfoWarsStore.com, Amerageddon and The Unholy Sea. I want to talk some about The Unholy Sea, also get into some of the latest news, developments, Donald Trump, what we should be doing to support Donald Trump and more. Steve Quayle, 25 years on radio, written dozens of books, a staple of Coast to Coast AM, and, of course, our show. He's here in studio, Gary Haven. Uh, has been uh, personally flying him around. Uh, Gary pilots his own jet for jets uh, to speak to groups and go on television programs to warn people because there's so much crazy stuff happening. Now, we're going to obviously have in the fourth hour a lot of the topical news and things that uh, are happening in the world today covered. David Knight is back from a well-deserved vacation, so David Knight will be here in studio, but shifting gears into just news in general. Teenagers struck by depression, the Times of London an epidemic. And again, this modern world is not empowering people. This is being done by design. How do we reach out to young people? Uh, I mean, obviously, young people are one of our greatest assets. They're one of the most awake groups, but it's a paradox. They're also one of the most unawake groups. It's, it's, it's almost like there's a division. How do you reach somebody in the matrix? Let me, let me, let me start with this. You know, David Rockefeller, I'm, excuse me, uh, uh, John D. Rockefeller, uh, who, who amassed a fortune. Uh, in today's dollars, it was over $600 billion. So he was by far the wealthiest man in the world, probably up at the level of Solomon. Well, he took his money and funded a variety of things. And one of them was the education system. And a, and a quote from Rockefeller was, was that we don't want people that are thinking, we want people that are workers. And so they funded an education system that for all of these years has really taken away the ability to think to think clearly, to think critically from our education. Created system. robots. Yeah. And so they've really had, they've got a hundred years investing in, in, in taking away the ability for, for people to think uh, as individuals. And so I, th I think the first thing we tell our young people is, hey, step back and think. We teach them how to think critically so that they can look at the evidence that's all over them. And, you know, Alex, one of the things I'm excited about is there's so much evidence. My gosh, it's, it's almost every day there's something in the news that there's no way to explain it, it, it except for what uh, they want to call conspiracy. It's no longer conspiracy. It's it's fact. And and so sure, why would NBC News and ABC all the last few months come out? And I, was, I was saying, why is it suddenly all over the news on CBS, NBC, ABC, 666, 666, you want to take a chip, you're going to get a chip. And I went, wait, the date 666 is coming up. Everything on these people is messages. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and you know, the chip and the idea that you'd have to take this mark to buy or sell, uh, you know, that was written 2,000 years ago. And guess what, guys? Here we have the technology. We have the computer system uh, that can control zillions of contractions. Exactly. It is upon us. Steve Quayle, what, what is the chip? What is the face scan? What is the mark of the beast? Well, the mark of the beast, obviously, people will argue over it, but the, the mark of the beast, the word literally means to inscribe in the skin on the hand or in the forehead. Obviously, there's genetic tattoos. There's all sorts of subdural implants, but here's the what The government's got to give you something or you don't buy and sell. Right. You don't buy, sell, or trade. 
And that's where we're going to be faced. The ultimate decision for Christians, are they going to yield and capitulate and lose their salvation? Because listen, when the day comes, by the way, the nice thing about the mark of the beast is biblically, God won't leave us without a witness. There'll be two witnesses in the book of Revelation that are saying, this guy's the bad guy, and I'm talking supernatural. They'll have the power. But don't they, those witnesses finally get killed? Yeah, after three and a half years, and they lie, their bodies lie in the streets of Jerusalem, and everybody gives gifts, okay? They're just happy they got rid of these two voice pieces for the God they've hated so long. And these two voices of truth. But they're yes. protected for several years. Yeah, they're, they're protected up until the day they die, and they're able to smite the earth with all the plagues, counter plagues. It's kind of like the, the Egyptian pharaoh was able to do his dirty deeds, but then God sent his servant Moses to deliver. And that's Newtonian physics. Yeah, absolutely. But see, here's the thing, too. I'm looking at your headlines. Teenagers struck by depression epidemic. I would like to know two things. How many of those kids are on SSRIs, okay? How many of them are gamers? Look, I, I have nothing against playing video games, but if they're programming you to basically, at a certain sub subliminal thought, go out and go on a killing rampage, I'm against a Pokemon. Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen, pocket monsters, and the craze, that is the biggest neuro-linguistic program. Well, they admit that you're recording everything for Google in live time. Absolutely. And it tells you where to go to get the monster, not knowing you're documenting everything for it. They want everybody's, they want everybody's immediate surroundings. They want everybody's immediate friends. And like I said, it all goes into an algorithm. It goes into a matrix. Let's talk more about the technocracy when we come back. Okay. Steve Quell and Gary Haven, stevequell.com. Gary Haven's here. We are the exclusive distributor for another week or so that it's in stores nationwide of Amerigeddon. $5 million budget film on a near future uh, probable reality. Very important. And you get a free bottle of colloidal silver when you get a second copy of Amerigeddon available at InfoWarsStore.com. That helps support the broadcast. You are the InfoWar. Stay with us. Steve Quayle is our guest uh, exclusively here in studio. I mean, you never see this guy uh, on TV, but he's now making films. He's now going on international TV and radio broadcasts, and he's here with us after 21 years interviewing him, and Gary Haven has brought him here. Very thankful for that. I've asked Gary to come in here basically whenever he wants to because uh, he, he's a great co-host here with the broadcast. Now, I didn't take a lot of phone calls today. I didn't take any uh, just because we've got so much to cover, but throughout the week I will be taking phone calls Donald Trump's coming to town tomorrow. We're going to have crew out there covering that live uh, as well. But I want people to understand something. Our reality is not what mainstream media is putting out. Obviously, that's a s statement that stands on its own. And I don't know all the answers on the things we've covered here today. But they are pushing the mark of the beast. They are pushing you will take vaccines. You will take a chip. The, 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 uh, just 10 years ago, they would say it didn't exist or we have chips, but kooks don't like them. Now it's you will take one. And so there's this belligerence that's now being put out there that is waking a lot of people up. I see the globalist losing a lot of ground, but I guess they've got to go ahead and emerge and go to their final steps because that's their plan. And then it looks like they're going to go authoritarian and try to enforce it again, just like the Bible states. Absolutely. You know, it's fascinating that they're going by their script. I think God made the devil this ultimatum you must warn them before you do it and that's what we're seeing right now every every signal every policy every action they're telling you what they're going to do and alex there's so many people that deny that they're really following their blueprint look obviously we're seeing the middle east war we're seeing the christians the war on christianity we're seeing the total uh, destabilization of nation states etc but the supernatural element is still what's affecting our kids, just to touch bases. Teenagers struck by depression epidemic. The only thing that's going to set them free is truth. They're already too much into the matrix. The only thing that's going to set them free is values. And, you know, when someone said, well, Common Core, you know what I said? You, there was a guy, there was a cartoon show, Tom Terrific. The, the bad guy in that show was Krabby Appleton, rotten to the core. It's the same thing as all public education. They'll go 10 miles out of their way to hurt somebody when doing the right thing is right there in front of them. Absolutely. So it's destruction by design. I used to say dumb unto death, okay? But, that, that's dumb unto death. Now it's dumb unto destruction. They've got to wait. Well, my up. dad used to always sit there and explain to me. He'd say, son... There are people that would rather screw you out of a nickel than make $100 with you. They just want to screw you. Absolutely. And, and I'm thinking, really? Because, you know, I was a nice guy. My dad was nice. And, and I got into life. It's like, wow, people really don't even really want prosperity. They just want to run everything, even if it's a pile of skulls. The 
global elite, besides being Luciferians, besides being some of the most uh, horrific entities on Earth. When I use the word entity, by the way, Alex, I mean something that's not human, okay? I want to make that clear. Or someone who has submitted their humanity to total demon possession. Why do you think Obama always has little flies landing on him? <laughs> well, I, can I tell you something? Michelle Obama, and you should have your guys look this up, was talking about uh, his odor, okay? Now, I'll tell you why. Beelzebub in the New Testament means Lord of the Flies, okay? Lord of the Flies. So Beelzebub is another name for who? Satan. Satan. And I mean, it's answer. amazing, though. Almost everywhere he goes, there's just flies all over the place. And, well, and the media makes a joke out of that. It's true. Well, it's just like this. There's a picture, and I can't find it. Maybe you guys can research it. But Tony Blair had, in the old days of videotape cameras, he had a reverse polarity incident. And what was on that image, Alex, was something that was a classic representation of a demon. Pointed ears. Oh, I remember Drudge carried it. Yeah. And it was like on TV, and it was like ears and a demon and horns. Yeah, and, and, and the same thing happened to Hilarious, okay? Hillary. H-E-L-L-A-R. Well, she doesn't need that to happen. She has that weird Joker demon face. I mean, if I saw somebody in a parking lot with that face, I would go away from them. Right, but here's the thing. The, the, and, and, and the idea of what I'm just saying about the image captured on Tony Blair was also captured on Hillary, and that was on Matt Drudge, too. But it was a Tony Blair one. If you can find it to show it, what's happening now? Now, guys, uh, Google Tony Blair demon, but, but let's go further. Yeah. It was in major British newspapers, because back then I wouldn't cover this stuff. That was right before I went into Bohemian Grove, because people, you know, basically hired me to do it. I didn't even believe it was going to happen. I mean, even back then, like 1999, 2000, I was still having you on, but going, oh, come on, Steve. And, <laughs> and it was in the British papers that he would be possessed by the spirit of the light in the morning. He's, his wife admitted this. Right. And then he would fall on the ground and flop around and get his orders. And it was in the newspapers. And then his wife was defending it. Yeah, and they went to the Great Pyramid of Giza, remember, and spent the night there. In order and Francois to... Mitterrand yes. has, the, has the 666 pieces of glass uh, for, the, for the pyramid at the Louvre yep. and dedicated it to Lucifer. Absolutely. That's in the newspaper. Well, here's the deal. The war is now plain for all to see. And, and, and it's very clear, Alex, it's playing out. No, no, that's not the one. It's him and a lectern, and it was weird. It was like he, like, suddenly, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yep. Well, and, and okay, the image you have on the screen right there a moment ago, the all-seeing eye, what's that? That's on your dollar bill on the top. But what is the critical issue about this? Lucifer was denied publicly but worshipped uh, uh, you know, individually or in secret, okay? Mm -hmm. And so now the, they're all open, okay? They're all open. Hollywood is overplaying their hand. And they're overplaying it because they think there will be no challenge. I, I've said this before. They will not write the last pages of history. God, who will act in history, is about to act. I said there's going to be come, something coming really quick. And I believe it's going to be, uh, how should I say this, supernatural in origin that is going to rattle this country one more time. I don't know if it's a horrific earthquake. I don't know. But it's going to be something so out of their control that they're going to have to basically go on and say, well, well what does this mean? And the talking heads will have no answers. And then you and I and Gary will be on saying, this is exactly what it means. Well, all I know is there is a mocking of God, a mocking of decency, a, a, a feeling of invincibility with these people when history shows they are not invincible. So there is this hubris, this, you know, there is this arrogance to them. Well, arrogance is always basically based on someone who thinks they're in control. But I believe that what we're seeing right now is I believe we're seeing played out before the American citizenry, Hillary's prog programming, melting down her body. They can only juice her so many times with whatever. Oh, let me bring that up. Yeah. What is your intel or uh, you as well, Gary? I'm going to fix that earpiece because I've okay. seen you do it. Thank I, you. And this is fun on air. We're teleprompter <laughs> yeah. free. Well, it should be popping in here. I'll just cram it in there. There you go. Okay. Um, I'm going to fix that on air. And this is teleprompter free, folks. This is how we do it. If you're a radio listener, Infowars.com forward slash show. Is that better? Or, or just cram it in there, or we'll, we'll get you a new, fresher. Piece. Okay, this is this is good now. It's turned. Fantastic. What is going on with her health? Because I know she, you know, had these brain surgeries, and she was in the hospital off and on for over a year, and clearly something's going on. But she looks worse and worse every week. Is it the campaign trail? All these doctors say she looks like she has serious problems. They say it's a conspiracy theory. What do you think's going on? Well, I think you had Steve Pachinik on, who I know personally, you know, you've known him for years in Bozeman. Yeah, by the way, he says hi. Tell him hi. Hey, Steve. The bottom line is a very bright man, probably one of the brightest men. You know it, I know it, we know it. Super famous spot, yeah, yeah. And and by the way, the the second most famous man to be murdered after Andrew Breitbart, remember, was Tom Clancy. 
And Tom Clancy. He co-wrote books with Clancy. Yeah, he By wrote. the way, I was Clancy was starting to go public about the New World Yes, Order. he was. And the thing that I think was the trigger point is when he was going to bring up the collusion between our government and the control of radical Islam, okay? Now, what's interesting to me about this is that you're seeing the fullest implementation, Alex, of the complete destruction from within everybody who's in you know let's call them the lord of the flies is uh the lord of the flies uh administration is bent on Ooh, that's thing. a good name for it yeah let's use that you know because you asked me the question and and let me share this too when you in, when you're in the world of evil spirits and true biblical deliverance the evil spirits that come out always have the seriously a smell of sulfur and it's fascinating or a smell of feces let's just be blunt so what I find is fascinating that the, in, in so many instances of, of Bohemian Grove, you're told what the people do, all this stuff, it's all centered around, it's centered around that which... Oh, came. I was asking earlier, in Skull and Bones, they're worshiping angels. They believe we're giving... Fallen into, angels. Fallen angels. They, they believe angels, eulogia, goddesses, but they do it in big pools of feces. Right. And, you know, without <laughs> trying to be too overly overt in my statement... The thing is, is that it isn't it interesting. That represents death. Feces never re represent life, okay? It represents live food that passes through your body that comes out, okay? So what we're seeing here is a total embrace of death. These people worship death. And all of us are to be the sacrifices. Our children, okay? Our grandchildren. I mean, they want to end the human line within the next several years at the latest. And they're at doing the it latest. through the vaccines that clearly have binary systems to change our DNA. Right. But one of the other things, since I was the guy that brought out, brought out chemtrails in the first, I've always been concerned about a binary follow-up. In other words, that would be the primary spraying, but at some point they introduce some form of a virus or some form of a nanite, a nanite, a nanoparticle that basically... And by the way, they have a lot of kooks out there that misrepresent things so they can then distract everybody but what we're saying is there's hundreds and actually thousands of patents on how to put it in the fuel it goes out the jet engines there are real crystals out there you know there are real water vapor there's real condensation trails we're talking about persistent ones that form these pollution clouds that have darkened the earth more than 20 percent according to nasa it's a massive geoengineering program and then bill and melinda gates come out with sponsored textbooks for kids saying we're spraying sunscreen on the earth added to jet fuel so they admit to kids they're doing it in major textbooks but tell us it doesn't exist. Well, you know, again, Steve, Steve and I were at 45,000 feet of my jet the other day, and I had the privilege <clears throat> of being taught the difference between contrails and chemtrails uh, at 45,000 feet with a man who, you know, who really made it public. Uh, it, it's real, and you can see the difference with your in front of your eyes. And, of course, people now can look up at the sky and see the difference. You know, when you and I were growing up uh, in the 60s, uh, the sky didn't look like Totally clear. Today. 70s, 80s, yeah. Yeah. Totally clear. I mean, they admit that it's dimming the Earth. So so what's global dimming about? Well, global dimming, I think it's a darkness that's coming on the planet. And there's a story on Dredge today that even the monuments in Washington, D.C. are being covered in a black slime. Did you see that? Yes. Okay, what's happened to the light of the world? Jesus is the light of the world. The evangelical Christians, part, portions of them will still admit that Jesus is the Son of God. But in order to be friends with the world, they've denied the very Lord that saved them. And I make no bones about it. We are in this the situation we're in and condition we're in because the Christians didn't speak up. And and Alex, look, the, the the independent voices of I would say investigative journalism have been calling them to task. I'm calling them to task. So we need to get them to the point. And that's what God is opening doors for you. God is opening doors for Gary Haven. God's open doors for me. Well, I know this. The globalists are malevolent. They admit they're out to get people. They admit the planetary government project that's 50 times bigger than the Manhattan Project was built to bring in a planetary government to reduce the human population by 80 to 90 percent. That's official UN Biological Diversity Assessment 1996, the full unedited one. I went to the UT library, got copies. It's in my film, Road to Tyranny. Actual copies where they say, we're going to reintroduce human sacrifice. We're going to reintroduce games based on debasing humans. We're going to have forced population reduction. We're going to bring in a pagan world government. I mean, they say it all in the UN. The, 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 that's what's so crazy. And then they have the Lucifer Trust that runs the prayer chapel at the UN building in New York. Absolutely. And, that, and they also have robots that are designed to basically feast on human decomposing bodies that fuel them. Okay? That's right. The Pentagon bought a bunch of those uh, that just go around killing people and then eating them. Yep. 
and and that's not that's that's not nonsense. You know, I wrote the whole book about it. And by the way, I, I'm telling people this that if you want the true understanding of chemtrails, you've got. And this isn't a pitch for the book. This is a pitch for the CIA revelation in the book on page 241 through 248. And and it, it's it's a remarkable thing. Not only do the chemtrails take us back to a different atmosphere, if you will, a very time of primordial evil, but it also alters all the frequencies and waves, and God keeps things in... in the I was about to say, they admit now what the old-timers said thousands of years ago, that the moon, obviously the sun's the main driver of climate, but then the moon, when it gets in front of the sun or, or, or in front of the earth with the sun behind it, will block a lot of the solar rays, but not just solar, the other space rays and the other particula, the many meteorites that are coming in, I guess by the billions every day, that forms the nuclei for rain and weather and all of it, that entire frequency system is being changed and manipulated. Absolutely. And and Gary, share about the moon moon rise, because that was very cool. <laughs> I, I looked, I said, I know this is significant, but I don't have it yet. All years you've been flying, 40 plus years. Share with Alex. It was it's the it's an amazing thing. Yeah, on Thursday we were at forty five thousand feet, uh, as 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 the evening came on, and the moon literally came out of the ground underneath us in rows. It was I've been flying for 40 years. I've really never noticed or seen that phenomenon. And by the way, also that you could see the shadow of the earth as the sun had set. And by the way, the shadow was a curvature, not not a not a line. Yeah, exactly. I love these crazies that say it's flat. <laughs> But, you know, th that shows how people mistrust the media so much that they go to the other extreme other than thinking everything's a lie. Yeah. I, t I tell you, what, we are living in the most fascinating times. I'm, I'm well, we're living in science fiction. You've got all the, you're flying around, your private jets yourself, and, you know, we're fighting the New World Order, and there's, you know, pharmacological crops that can grow thousands of different, they can grow live vaccines in crops. You know, you got spiders that are part goat. You got doors on cows now that they grow humanoids in. And I was reading about it in a technical magazine, and I talked to somebody who'd been up at MIT, but out at one of their farms. They said, yeah, it's true. You know, I was there as part of my, uh, you know, uh, MIT degree at the end of it, and they took us in and showed us the cows with the doors on the sides. You know, Steve shared with me some fascinating things. You know, they've things. cut doors in on the sides oh, and yeah, just go absolutely. into the uterus whenever they want. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Steve shared some fascinating, you know, hanging out with this guy uh, 24 hours a day uh, uh, is just uh, mind-boggling. Uh, uh, he has a friend who's actually walked in. He kind of went down that path a minute ago. Uh, but but people were in, uh, not people, chimeras were in cages. cages. Share, share that, a moment of that. I remember you talked about this over a decade ago, and I thought you were nuts. But even though it was in publications, they have these. Absolutely. A uh, gentleman who was stationed in Texas, a big-time intelligence operator, I, he was he openly admitted to be an assassin. He openly admitted doing all this kind of evil stuff. But he, I, I dropped him off at the airport the last time I ever saw him alive. And he said, I want you to know this. There are secret government labs all over the country, under the ground. And he said, there are human-animal hybrids. And he said, the thing that even got his attention, and he said, I'm an evil man, but we're half-human-animal hybrids. And the human part of him was saying, help me, I'm a human. Alex, he broke like a dam and wept. And then I saw I saw someone. Well, I talked to, I talked to a, a, a well-known genetic engineer, and they just told me, they said, listen, I'm not going to even get into it. Go ahead. But but here here's the issue. Every wonderful thing that God made. Remember when there were blue skies? I remember I used to, as an early photographer, I called them F-16 days. That's when you had the brightness, the beautiful white clouds, yeah. and you could just get a great photo. The thing is, is that everything that was bright now is being just <clears throat> distorted, turned out. The, isn't it interesting? The symbols of this country are being covered in a black slime, Okay. Everything is falling apart. We are going into The CIA admittedly said they financed ugly art and ugly buildings. Absolutely. Things that will rot and look bad to make us feel bad. Right. And and it's all a PSYOP. You know, I I, I told... Uh, they so want to give vaccines that, quote, stop anxiety, but that actually stops the higher order thoughts. Right. Well, after meeting with someone who we met with over at Jim Baker's very highly placed source, you know, I, I, I said to one of your guys, I said, let's have a national kill your iPhone day. I promise you, listening to him, I'm going back to flip phones, okay? By the way, that's what Drudge has always said. And I, even though I can use iPhone to shoot video everything, I'm just going to use a camera. I'm done. It's gone. Yep. In fact, too. it's I mean, because they're horrible. They're sitting there typing, sending people stuff. It, it's crazy. Right. Why do we do this? And my, my iPhone was taken over the other day. My camera turned on. And Wait, know, I didn't even know. I was telling you that happened to, to yeah, us. Yeah, it just happened to me two days ago. My computers turn on when I shut them down. Uh, that's happening to uh, Roger Stone. Yep. I mean, they've announced they're just using their cyber system now to do whatever they want. They're just getting us used to it, saying, hey, we're not going to let you see any news about Hillary being sick.
For a couple of years, I put out a magazine, basically at cost, and it was successful. But compared to shooting one video and it reaches a million people, it just wasn't wasn't feasible. I spent all my time messing with it. But one of the first magazines we came out with was a design that I came up with that I think really says it all. And it's this all-seeing eye pyramid that is jacked into the dehumanized devil's creation of a copy of what God had made built on a pile of human skulls. This is an emergency transmission. And then we break down the end of humanity, rise of the robots. And they just tell us everywhere, all these socialist governments say, the answer to you not having a job is robots, which they admit will make you even more obsolete. <laughs> I mean, this is so obvious. Steve Quayle, and of course, Gary Haven, other comments you want to impart to the listeners and viewers. Well, we're seeing a technologically decadent society. I coined a term when I went on talk radio, tech decadence, okay, Technical, technological decadence. We're seeing the fulfillment, uh, it, whether people believe it or not, we're seeing the fulfillment of the words of Jesus, that they literally, the Illuminists, the elite, the globalists, want the destruction of human flesh. And not only that, they're going to power the robots with human flesh. And you know what, Alex? Well, you talked about the mark of the beast. i got to get something. Do you know what the very first name of the very first chip what, that was able to basically do all of the, the things that were going to be in the future? It was 20 years ago. It was called the Soul Catcher Chip. I remember. Yep. And you and I, I think that was one of our first or second shows we did together 21 years ago. But what would possess, aha, good word. Yeah, we go to wide shots. People can see this. Yep. What would possess them to name that the soul catcher? Again, it's a dehumanization. This is what's at stake, ladies and gentlemen. It's not your retirement. It's not, you know, gee, where do you go on vacation next month? It's what do I do to do as, be as, as most, the most informed I can become and be as active as I can come. And by the way, they're creating an economy where you almost have to be in their system. They plan to force everybody into it to even communicate and warn people you've got to be you know, part of the system but not of it, I guess. I want to play this clip since you mentioned that we're going to come back and, and talk to Gary Haven and then hand the mic over to David Knight. Now, this is from, I think, NBC News, at CBS News, ABC News. We've got them all saying your children will get microchips soon. Here it is. You know, chances are if you have a four-legged family member at home, it's already microchipped. And if the technology exists to save Fido in an emergency, what about microchipping your child? Before you say, no way, I would never do that, hear one mom's story. It's the longest two seconds of your life, and it's absolute panic. I want my son back. We've seen it in movies. This is my all right, let's stop right there. So, so your child's going to be safe if they just get this chip. We're not going to get into how that's all bull. And at the end of the report, they say, so soon, your child will get a chip. Yeah, you know, they, they package all of this as to our benefit. Uh, it, and by the way, my definition of this mark of the beast uh, is simply a barcode. It's, a, it's pretty much the same barcode that a banana at Walmart has. And that's how they see us. They you make yourself a commodity, a human commodity. resource. I, exactly. They even tell you you're a human resource. Yeah. You know, and if people research the, uh, uh, the barcode, uh, it begins with a six. There's a six in the center to tell the, 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 the reader to switch to a different set of information, and it ends on a six. Did you know that? I did. It's crazy. In fact, here is the end of the clip. Let's play that. And guys, this is what we're talking about, the microchip. I don't know if you can see it in my hand. It's the size of a grain of rice, very, very small. And the expert that we spoke with actually tells us that barcodes were introduced in the late 1960s. That and back then, people thought, uh, this is way too invasive and too weird. And now barcodes are so commonplace that we don't even think about them anymore. The expert tells us this will happen sooner rather than later. Again, a nice, pretty blonde out there. Keep your kids <laughs> safe. Take the chip. It's like Eve. Just you're gonna live forever. Just take this, baby. Yeah. Well, I, I won't do any blonde jokes on that. But what I will say is this: is that soft selling death is never, ever, ever uh, uh, received by the people that are buying the lie. We should make some ads to counter that. That show an yes. authoritarian future. We gotta have it to buy and sell. And what that's like. And what would Hitler have done with this? Exactly. And Alex, we're at the point now where people better recognize it's no longer a conspiracy theory. World government is, is here. here. Stay there. And, and, here. and the film, The Unholy Sea, available now on InfoWarsStore.com and exclusively Amerigeddon. And you can get colloidal silver free when you order uh, the Amerigeddon second copy. Stay with us. Well, David Knight uh, is going to be uh, breaking down, I would imagine, a lot of the current news that's breaking and information that's coming out. We've got Gary Haben here. Uh, producer, and he also stars in the very powerful film Amerigeddon, available at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank you for your purchase of that. It, it, it 
funds our operation. You get a second copy, get a bottle of Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver. We now are covering the Unholy Sea, uh, of course, uh, with the main host of it being Steve Quayle at InfoWarsStore.com. Let's spend a few minutes on the Unholy Sea. I mean, I've never been a Catholic basher. A lot of great Catholic people. You know, you can have corrupt people as Protestants, whatever, on both sides. But I tell you, now the Pope, I mean, it sounds like the devil. I mean, it, it's incredible. Uh, I mean, he's given Obama a major run for his money, calling for world government, saying Europe shouldn't be Christian. I want to get a comment from you on that and then Gary Haven. Well, first of all, the unholy sea, Alex, was set up to ba basically show that there's been a tight control over real history and that all roads lead to Rome. When when our film crew, Tim Alberino, by the way, did a great job on the writing and the producing of the, uh, I'm the producer, he directed it. But the point being is, is that the unholy sea the movie shows the very control of ancient history, which, by the way, is underground tunnel systems, the giants, the cover-up of the history of the giants. And see, the giants are coming back, and that's what's critical because this is what DARPA is doing. And in the Unholy Sea, we actually have the pilot interview of the gentleman that flew the dead giant back from Afghanistan in 2005. He goes into Bagram Air Force Base, or Bagram, I guess some of them pronounce it, they, uh, so a lot of really, really wild stuff. It's, it's wild, but it's also documented. Tom Horn's on right here. You got the yeah. pilot. It's yeah. crazy. Yep. Tom Horn is in this talking about when he went to the uh, Vatican Observatory on Mount Graham in Arizona, the leading graduate observatory specialists in the Catholic Church in the world were openly talking about they had to wait for the unidentified flying objects to clear the field. Now, here's the deal. Whether you believe in this stuff or not, the Catholic Church did Childhood and the you know the movie that was on the Sci-Fi Channel based on Arthur Clarke. That that entity that comes back, the Vatican is saying Jesus Christ is out, but the gods that created us are coming back, and they're the ones that created us from the primordial goo. They're coming back as an intergalactic savior. It's kind of like the Twilight Zone to serve mankind. And of course, Arthur C. Clarke was in OSS, the inventor of the telecommunications uh, uh, satellite. Two thousand and one. Uh, I mean, MI six. Guy's, yeah, the guy's brilliant. So what was interesting and is fascinating is we document in the Unholy Sea the underground tunnel system in Peru that went all through the Americas called the Shinkana. And then the Coricancha, which is the, one of the biggest Catholic church uh, monasteries, if you will, uh, cathedrals in Cusco, Peru. And, and we get the most famous Peruvian explorer in the world. And he's allowed access at one point and denied it, you know, later on, eight years later. And he talks about the, the, we talk about the megalithic structures. Some of these stones can't be moved today. It's one thing to move them above ground. I mean, you know, you're talking 1,000 pounds. But stone. up a mountain. Yeah, but up a mountain or under the ground. And they're perfectly, uh, basically, they come into such perfect cohesion and perfect support of each other that there's no way it can humanly be possible. I think, okay, I, I, I've got people, uh, attention, I hope that if you understand history, ancient history, you'll understand the future. Well, it's it's certainly an intriguing film, powerful and available at InfoWarsStore.com. And again, it gets people thinking. And Steve Quayle, you've done it again. Real fast, Gary Haven, thanks for coming in again. Thanks for bringing this guy. Yeah, Alex, we're really proud to be here and and, and, uh, and honored. Uh, this uh, product that Steve's created, The Unholy Sea, I've watched it. I, I endorse it. It's great. And, of course, our movie, uh, Marageddon, which you star in, uh, is available oh, now in the stores. And uh, uh, we encourage people to, to, to buy it and to share it. Uh, you know, this movie is important. Uh, it, it's not just a movie. It's a message. It's not just a message. It's a movement. We can take our country back. Uh, Alex, thanks to patriots like you, you we're bet. giving people hope. Well, thank you. It's gotten great reviews. No reviews yet on InfoWarsStore.com because it just started shipping out uh, as we speak. Exclusively available. And I guess it's next week it finally hits stores? Well, uh, actually, Walmart's October 4th. But we are offering it through your program and uh, in, in, and soon through through uh, Steve Quells. Uh, so it's going to be out there and available. Please take advantage. Support these organizations that are fighting the battle for you by purchasing this movie. Absolutely. Well, we're having people. a big effect. Thanks to everybody. David Knight is coming up with all the latest uh, news and breaking information and a lot of video clips we didn't get to. Stay with us. We'll be back.